All right, so another example here of identifying a type of conic section. And here we're going to do 3x squared plus 12x minus 4y squared minus 32y minus 100 equals 0. And depending on what type of conic section it is, we're either going to state the vertex or the center. So again, to do these, you're just basically doing completing the square. So I'm going to start off by adding uh, 100 to both sides. So that'll give me positive 100 on the right. On my x squared terms, I'm going to factor out the coefficient on the x squared, which would be a 3. So inside the parentheses, I would need x squared plus 4x. Same thing on my, uh, my terms involving y squared and y. I'm going to factor out the coefficient on the y squared term, which would be negative 4. So inside the parentheses, I would need y squared um, plus 8y. OK, so I think we've got everything. Uh, everything okay here. We would have 3x squared plus 12x. We would have negative 4y squared minus 32y. Our negative 100 is on the right side. Now I'm going to do this uh, sort of the, the completing the square step. I want to make uh, each thing in parentheses a perfect square. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. Okay, so again we take, uh, we look at the linear terms in each set of parentheses. I'm going to take 1 half of 4 That'll give me 2. I take 2 and square it. That gives me positive 4. So I'm going to throw a plus 4 inside of the first set of parentheses. Likewise, I'm going to take 1 half of positive 8. That'll give me positive 4. 4 squared gives me 16. So I'm going to stick a plus 16 inside of that set of parentheses. OK, so now this is kind of the, the, uh, also the tricky part, because um, we have to manipulate the right side as well. Notice if you multiply um, the positive 3 times the positive 4. So if we take 3 times our 4, we're going to get a positive 12. So that means we really added 12 to the left side. So that means I'm going to add 12 to the right side as well. If we take our negative 4 times 16, let's see, negative 4 times 16 is going to be negative 64. So really, I also threw negative 64 on the left side, which means I'm going to have to also subtract 64 on the right side. OK, so now we can write this as 3 times x plus 2 quantity squared minus 4 times uh, y squared plus 8y plus 16. We can write that as y plus 4 quantity squared. And uh, let's see, so 100 minus 64 would be 36, plus 12 would give us 48. Um, this to me is starting to look very much like um, a hyperbola. And what we can do to put it in standard form, and again, we really don't need to. We could read the center off at this point. But I'm going to go ahead and put it in standard form anyway, because that's what I like to do. So we would have x plus 2 squared. Um, 3 divided by 38, I believe that would reduce to 1 over 16. Um, we would have y plus 4 quantity squared. If we take 4 over uh, 48, that's going to give us a positive 12 equals 1 on the right. So at this, at this point, I recognize, because there's a minus sign in between these two terms, I recognize that it's a hyperbola. And it's going to have a center at the point negative 2, comma, negative 4.